RV's Gone Wild, number eight. Let's just get into it. Susan B. sent me this picture. Not sure where it came from. She took a picture on the road with her son. Uh, they think it's on an old GMC RV chassis. But if somebody knows more about this one, I tried to Google image search it. Couldn't find anything about it. This is a weird one. So uh, what do we know about this one? Anybody got any information on it? Let me know on the comments below. And here's one that was making the rounds recently. This Jeep became disconnected from the Class A. It was the Toad. And this is why you need to make sure to strap those things down. Put a yellow strap on them so they don't go anywhere. This one went somewhere. Now, luckily, it didn't actually hit anything. Spoiler alert here. These are the luckiest RV owners of the week because this thing just came to a nice, comfortable stop. I don't think any damage happened. Oh, gosh, people could have died. Amazing. I always liked the idea that as long as there's been cars, there's been RVs. Let's face it, the covered wagons going across the country were the first RVs that I can think of. But yeah, here we got this old rig here using that classic aluminum style that we saw in the early part of the last century. And even in this old pic, you can see how families still like to use their vehicles for RVs way back in the day, even if they were just erecting a canvas tent around the darn thing. We RVers carry a long tradition. Now, maybe you want to get into RVing, and boy, do I have the RV for you. My wife and I just happened to spot this on old Chilliwack Lake Road here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. If you want a free RV, this one's waiting for you. I can't vouch for the quality. I can't vouch that it's not filled with water. And there it was, just sitting up someone's driveway with free spray painted all over it. So if you want to head out on Chilliwack Valley Road, you can't miss it. There's a free RV just waiting for you. Good luck. Large Marge sent this in. Love the name. Uh, these folks have taken this rig all the way down to South America and back. I think this thing's been provisioned to be able to take 190 gallons of diesel. And in what they call the toy hauler, that trailer they have, they have another 120 gallons of diesel capacity. So they can drive all the way from Alaska to Peru and never have to fill up more than once. Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> Hey, did you know that I get over 20 to 30,000 views, sometimes 100,000 on these videos, but there's only 5,000 subscribers. Please help me out and hit the subscribe button. It's the only thing I ask for. I'll keep making these, but please just click the subscribe button right now while I go on to the next video. Just click the button. And thanks to Simmer on W for sending me this clip where we can clearly see this guy's going to have no problem with trailer sway. Pete A saw this Buick Century camper in Colorado. It, I guess this is a camper. It's that or it's an art piece on its way to, you know, Burning Man or something. But uh, thanks for sending it in, Pete. And thanks to Brian J for sending me in these set of pics. I guess this is the Great Dale house car. They only made about 50 or 60 of them in the 1960s. So this was a limited run by this one person. Uh, I've never seen these before. I wonder if you've ever seen these on the open road. It's definitely got a really cool retro look. A little more spacious on the inside than I would have imagined. I found this YouTube video. I put a link to it down in the description where this gentleman built this tiny little camper. Just to make sure they were watertight, I went ahead and ran clear silicone around each of them. Put it on this Ranger. I don't know. It doesn't look like a Ford Ranger to me, but I guess it's some other type of uh, small side-by-side -side, uh, off-road utility vehicle. Uh, he built out this solar panel, you know, powered little mini RV for one. He did it. Take a look at it. Found it pretty cute. Don't know how far you can get on a tank of gas with one of these, especially if you got that load. But power to him. Check out the link. I've got this old battery bank down here, and I've got my heated floors plugged into that. I've got my fan plugged into that. And that's also where the solar power comes in. Check out the link if you want to see more. Props to Steve R for sending this in to me. This is this classic Ford Econoline Class C setup. But you always wonder, how do these folks have to uh, level their rig? They made the best of it using rocks, and I think it looks like some shelving from inside to make these ramps. Um, you know, I didn't get a lot of Fords in this video, so I'm probably just gonna give this guy, the RVing with Joe, tip of the hat Gold Star Award for the ingenuity that it took to make this thing level. I bet you it's not even level inside. <laughs> One thing I like about having a single axle camper, it's really easy to level. This is coming from Bio Billy, and he's got this 1967 Scamp. Apparently, it had frame issues, and so he went ahead and just put it on the back of a whole nother trailer. Apparently, he realized that as he peeled back the paint, it originally had this sort of hippie color, so he went with that and just repainted it. So he refers to it as a hippie camper. I like the roof on top, so you really don't have to worry about leaks. Hey, Billy, how does this thing perform in the wind when you're driving down the freeway with that extra roof on top? 
Thanks to Dale A for sending in a couple of different pictures here. This one has all kinds of creative add-ons, including that whole front rack, and, and I don't know what's going on with this one. Good luck to whoever the owner of this rig is. I'm sure they got enough challenges in life. They don't need me teasing them anymore than I already have. And Frank R. flagged this one to me. This is a Class A motorhome, but I'm guessing the motor died a long time ago, probably, or, and or the transmission. So they just attached a hitch to the front, and now it's a trailer love to know what kind of truck is towing this but i guess it, you can flat tow it if you're not worried about blowing out the differential and transmission or if you removed the drive shaft why not harry t sent this in apparently it's a 1981 toyota sun raider dually combo with a fifth wheel trailer they'd only made a few of them back in 1981 so it was in different magazines i never even imagined there'd be a dually toyota from back then but here we go it's definitely got that late 70s early 80s look Here's another one that I'd ask you guys, if you've seen this one out there, Enka is the name of it. I tried to Google it, tried to look this one up. This looks like it's a six by six, but I couldn't find any information on it. I was even wondering if it was Photoshop, but it looks real. I can't figure out what all those weird little pulleys are in front. Are they supposed to be speakers? Are they some kind of intake? Is this thing even real? Is this real life? Never seen this one before. Goes to show how those classic old all metal chassis, those old metal cars, can handle so much weight, can handle so much tow capacity. You could build a whole RV camper on top of this thing. There's probably no modern car that you could build on top of like this. You know, I've shown big rigs towing fifth wheel RVs before, but this one cracked me up because even though that RV he's towing is a pretty long RV, I still think this tow rig is actually even longer. I wonder what kind of space you need to reserve at a campsite to bring this bad boy in. But it is that time for trailer turducken. Turducken is when you take a chicken and you cook it inside a duck and you cook that duck inside a turkey. It tastes awesome. However, it's not necessarily the best model for towing. And we're going to start with construction turducken. Chris G sent this in. It's a photo of his dad's rig back in Australia when he used to grade the Outback Roads. And he actually would tow his truck and trailer behind the grader as he would go down the roads. The plus side is he was always towing his trailer over freshly graded road. And that takes us to Cody P, who's showing us another one of these flatbed turduckens where somebody takes a fifth wheel trailer or, or another kind of trailer and puts it on a big long flatbed so they can carry their toys on the back. Of course, you got to have a tow rig that can handle something like this. And this is two RVs are better than one turducken. And when I saw this one, I thought, how much RV do you actually need? I'm guessing there's enough people along on this journey that they need the extra RV storage in the back, or maybe this is for a business. But then I kind of zoomed in even further and just trying to figure out, is that a trailer with a golf cart in the back or just a whole bunch of bikes? I wish I could see a higher resolution picture of this, but this is the best one I could get. I always think it's funny when you see a full-size RV motorhome carrying a full-size trailer. That's a lot of beds. And James E, well, he sent us multiple turducken recipes here. We've got this fairly heavy duty rig with a, what looks to be a fifth wheel trailer just sitting right on the top. I don't think this is a camper shell, looking at that side door. You gotta have a big ladder to get up there too. This is one mighty long turducken where it's got the big rig with the vehicle on the back and then it got, has the fifth wheel trailer and then it has another trailer with, it's, this thing's crazy. Uh, I, again, I can't imagine trying to take turns in any kind of city with this. I would just go from truck stop to truck stop. I pride myself on being able to tow well. That's a whole lot of vehicle. And this last one from James E. yet again shows how you can take these fifth wheels and put them on goosenecks. And just as I was putting this video together, I saw more emails come in calling these possibly goose campers. Is that the name of this style? I'm going to have to do some more Googling on it. I'll probably have a lot more on this on number nine coming up soon. This is towable energy to duck in. And what I mean by that is he's got his truck, he's got his fifth wheel, but then he's carrying another utility trailer. And in this utility trailer, he's got it all decked out with all sorts of energy sources. He's got, he's got batteries in there, he's got a generator in there, he's got a backup generator in there, gasoline. Let me show you. It's just a tow behind storage, built in generator so nobody can steal it. Diesel heater so that I can warm it up in here to start the generator if it's super cold. So that put two Nautilus 6 volt batteries in here. Joined them in series to give me 12. Barbecue and. Barbecue. In the <laughs> summertime, of course, I even got more stuff in here, but yeah. don't carry all the diesel fuel. Yeah. Spare generator you were mentioning? Spare generator, yeah. spare diesel heaters and parts and stuff. Compressor. Tables, just sad. Extension cords, hoses. <laughs> yeah. And there's a link below to his video if you want to check out the full video.
And Michael B. sent this in. It's a classic. It's Schooly Turducken. You saw a lot of hippies make these in the 60s and the 70s, and it's a look that I still like. Now check out this badass big rig. Paul C. sent this to me. He's had it for over 24 years. It was a 1978 GMC General with a Cummins Big Cam 400 and a double overdrive 13-speed transmission. It's permanently attached to a 27-foot 1972 Airstream Ambassador where he has a walk-through setup so he can get from the cab to the back. He says it'll climb mountains as fast as he dares and it was designed for heavy haul. I put a link in the description to this video. Check out this drone view. I was really impressed with this. When I see a trailer like this, it makes me rethink what I want out of my retirement rig. Plum Crazy sent in this. This is their personal turducken setup. I thought it was a good representation since they had the exact length of it to tell you this is what 67 feet looks like. So that gives you some context to how long these rigs get. It's a Ram 3500 with a 30 foot Arctic Fox fiber. It's got a 20 foot utility trailer behind with a four seat Honda side by side. He took this picture at Independence Rock in between Casper and Rawlings, Wyoming. You are plum crazy, aren't you? I'm gonna call this one, your trailer is backward turducken. This is another one of those turduckens where he's taking a trailer off the chassis and put it onto a truck, but he put it on backwards. Got himself quite the toe behind him and he just has this funniest shit ass grin on his face when the guy drives by. Looks happy. Thanks for sending that in, Randall. Tracy from Boulder City showed me this one and this fire truck, you know, has a lot of water capacity because they're built to handle carrying a lot of water. Has a huge passenger compartment and it's carrying a fairly sizable RV. So this is quite the setup. I love that toy carrier pickup in the back, the way they got it set up. This is definitely fire truck turducken. Thanks to Windworn Saddle Tramp for sending in this moto turducken. Now this is the second motorcycle turducken I've seen. I'm guessing I'm gonna see more, send them my way. Remember, you can send me any photos of these various RV rigs or crazy things you're seeing on the road. Send them to me at RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. Please send me your emails. I read them all. I try to reply to everybody I can. I can't reply to everybody but I'll try to include your picture in one of these videos. And you can see Mr. Saddle Tramp here has made great use of his motorcycle turducken. And this is a turducken, but man, that's one nice, long luxury rig. It makes me wonder, is this for some stars or for some talent at a movie set? You know, movie sets can have all kinds of trailers, and you'd be surprised at how many of these trailers look just like the trailers you and I are driving every day. Recently here in Vancouver, which is called Hollywood North because there's so much movie shooting that happens up here, I was hanging out right next to a movie set, and you could see all the various RV-style trailers that were coming in. Of course, they're the classic, you know, honey wagon bathroom trailers. We all know what those look like. They were various uh, either big rig trailers that were converted or actual RVs that were in use. Uh, in this case, this was for the assistant director and a bunch of other people that were working on the crew. And then you can see all these other ones. I didn't really have a chance to know who was using which one, but lots of different tradesmen and different crewmen were using these RVs. And you can see some of these that are independent contractors are clearly just outfitting their own rig and bringing it along. You see this sometimes with the medical teams. And most of the time you've got commercial rigs towing these around. So they're not getting towed around by little F-150s. In Los Angeles, you see these all over the place and they're called Star Wagons. They have the market. They're not the only ones, but they've been around forever. And to the average RVer, they'll look pretty familiar like some base level stick and tin style trailers. It's because Star Wagons actually builds these all themselves. So not only do they rent them out to all the different studios down there, but they manufacture them purpose built. So they're really built to be Star Trailers. But when you look at them up close, you can see it's all the classic BLL and, and, and Lippert parts all over these things. And the insides are done up pretty nice. But on the outside, they just like look like your average budget RVs with average budget parts. And the stars don't know the difference. They just want them to be nice on the inside. For a long time, Star Wagons was like a family operation, but it got bought a couple years ago by some big conglomerate. Anyone who lives in Los Angeles is familiar with this logo. And yes, it looks like a ripoff of the Star Wars logo. Although the show must go on, this video is now going to come to an end. That's all I got for you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, please. It really helps if you subscribe. You know, these videos are all for free. I just need your help clicking the subscribe button. You'll see number nine coming real soon. And when you click subscribe, you guarantee you'll see my videos in your feed. Again, if you got cool videos or pictures you want to send them my way, hit me up at RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. Spring is coming, so whether or not you're going to go RVing, camping, or just going out for a day trip, get busy living. And I had wind-worn saddle tramp. <laughs> I had wind-worn saddle tramp. I guess. <coughs> wind-worn... No. As always, there's some other videos you can check out here. There's one right here to my left, there's one down here diagonally, and there's one right below me.